Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, so today actually it's quite different because uh, usually we try to do some the tutorial on tracker that uh, the documentation already there actually. So uh, today I decide to try something new. So basically it's uh, related to the tracker installation. So if we if you visit the tracker uh, website for the installation page, we can see that actually it can uh, install in the Windows, it can install in the Linux, it can install in the Docker and something like that. But uh, I want to try whether we can uh, install Trekkar in the cloud with the, but, uh, with the, the VPS, but on top of the Kubernetes cluster. So I tried to do some experiment and I can do that for single instance of Trekkar. Actually, the idea is I want to try whether we can do a horizontal scaling or at least we can have a multiple a tracker instance that still share some uh, same database so we can uh, make a load distribution but then i see in another page that uh, it might be not possible but let's try no problem but for this video uh, we will try only for uh, installing the tracker okay <coughs> installing the tracker on top of the kubernetes of course we need the docker image okay but uh, it's there actually for the Kubernetes. So I will only show uh, how to deploy it on the Kubernetes. So first thing first, okay. This is my cloud shell. Actually, uh, I have three files that are related to the Kubernetes. First is the deployment definition, and then the config map definition, and the uh, third is uh, service definition. So each of them is uh, have their own purpose actually. So first let's see in this page so actually i already have this cluster of kubernetes in the google cloud platform only a single cluster with single nodes only for the testing okay so what will i do actually i will create a new deployment for the tracker and then i will create a service so i can expose the tracker that i deploy on the on top of the kubernetes okay so that's the idea okay but uh, before this, I actually already set up one VM for the database. So my tracker will use that database. So here's the thing. First, actually, in this, uh, let's say you want to deploy the tracker on top of Kubernetes using Google Cloud Platform. Actually, what you need to do is go, go to the Kubernetes engine uh, page, and then you can uh, create a new Kubernetes cluster here. Okay, just follow the for the GKE standard and follow the uh, what I call just follow the instruction and then you will have this uh, cluster so because that will uh, take some minutes or more actually for processing so I will skip that so the condition is I already have my cluster here okay so I have my console here so let's see first whether we have deployment here get okay. deployment Okay, so I don't have any deployment right now, so I don't have any tracker running on top of Kubernetes right now, so we will try to do that. Okay. Oh, first, I forgot. Let's uh, connect to the Kubernetes first. Okay. Okay, then kubectl get deployment. Just to make sure that I don't have any deployment for tracker. We do it. No resource. Um, tracker. Okay, I think I don't have anything. Let's see. PCTL get pods. Okay, nothing also. So I already prepared the script. So this is the tracker folder that I that I have. So it consists of three uh, script or three files the first is deployment and the second is service and then the third is config map so the order or the sequence for uh, using this script actually the first we need to execute the or to create the config map this is actually uh, consists of the tracker configuration the tracker uh, xml configuration that consists of the where the database what is the username and then uh, what is the password and what is the database name and something like that and this and the second is we need to execute this deployment YAML. So this actually consists of the de of the definition. What is the deployment? Which image that it will use, and what port that it use actually. So in this case, 
actually the tracker by default will expose the port 8082 and i use a 50 uh, 55 so i will expose that and then it will mount the slash of this slash tracker slash conf slash tracker.xml which is a default path for the tracker configuration with the value of my config file okay i won't show that because it will uh, show my password for the database and the ip so i will leave it uh, like that and the third is the service the demo okay so this is this is the one that will uh, enable us to have an ip external ip so we can access the tracker uh, using a uh, web okay so let's try so we need to execute the script using this kubectl apply minus f the first is the config map okay okay so okay nothing changed because config map is already there and then we need to deploy apply minus f deployment so we will create a deployment for a tracker then we can check again kubectl get deployment okay so one deployment already there let's check the pods the pods get pods okay the pods it's also running without any restart so i think it's okay now and then we need to expose the service because right now if we get the service something like this actually okay we don't have uh the external ip right so the service or the tracker container that running the pod that already running actually cannot accessible from the internet so we need to create the service by executing the script apply minus f service so it will create a ip load balancer ip so we can use that for accessing the tracker okay that's so simple actually so if you choose to use another platform like azure or aws actually you just need these three files okay we can uh, discuss later if you want to do uh, this three I, I can share and let's check again oh, sorry get service okay so we can see here that actually the tracker is uh, on process now so it's publishing the service so we can see that for the external ip it's pending right now so we can wait for a while okay i don't know how long it will take but I think it's much uh, faster than uh, we create a cluster from the uh, beginning. So let's see. Okay, so the IP is something like this: 104.154.71.95. So this is the IP, right? So using this IP, actually, we can access the tracker with the default configuration. Okay, except the database because the database we already use the uh, database that I uh, set up before so we just need to copy this and access it in the browser okay because it's http connection okay we can see that this is okay the login page the default is still same admin admin and let's remember okay and then login oh wait i think let's see why it's happened incorrect email address let's see again okay. so the tracker already there oh okay okay i see so why the, the default password is not working because previously i already tried to uh, set up tracker okay with my previous database so the data is persistent there that's why when I create another deployment for the tracker with same database, the data is still there, the configuration is still there. This is also my, uh, what I call, my device here. So, let's see. Okay. So, let's see whether I can make this uh, active. Let's see. I'm. Let me check whether you can see my phone okay so this is my phone i will try to change the status to active by enable the data okay let's wait for a minute let me check okay so the frequency is let's change it to five and okay i will start the surface okay let's see whether it works Okay, let's see in the status. Okay. 
five minutes, five seconds. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see. It's not working. Briefly see, it's working. Let's reduce the frequency. So the frequency is one, something like this, and then let's start again. Okay, it's not working. Okay, let me change my phone. Hold, hold on. Let me try. Wait for a minute, right? So this is only one quick video, so be patient, right? Hello. Okay, so this is uh, another phone for me to test. So I will enable the device here. So, okay. Let's start. Let's check. Okay, we can see that the status is on, right? So actually, the instance of the record that we deploy on top of the Kubernetes is working fine. So we can receive the data from the phone and it's updated in real time. So the problem is with my uh, second phone so no problem so basically what we can conclude here is actually it's possible if we want to deploy the tracker on top of the kubernetes but we want to try in the next video or in the next time whether it's possible to have multiple instances of tracker and then we can have a huge load that we can uh, process at the same time i think that's uh, the only thing i can share for now see you next time